Hello there, I am Ricardo Sesi Marina, and for the last topic, we are going to discuss about the earthquake mechanism theories. Paano nga ba nangyari ang mga pagyanig, all in all, na nararanasan natin sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo? At ano nga ba ang mga dahilan nito? What if I said that the rocks are not weak because the rocks are weak? The rocks are weak because the stress is strong. Sa inyong palagay, tama nga ba ito? Sabay-sabay natin niyang alamin hanggang sa dulo ng ating discussion. There are two well-known theories that discusses about the earthquake mechanisms. The first one is the plate tectonics theory, which is proposed by Alfred Wegener, and the other one is the elastic rebound theory by Henry Felding Reed. Both theories explained how the Earth's crust moves very slowly, time to time, which even our scientists couldn't believe at first. And depending on how these plates or rocks interact with each other, have a huge impact on the Earth. Diving in more of the plate tectonics theory, Alfred Wegener proposed that the world's outermost mechanical layer, which is composed of lithosphere and asthenosphere, is constantly moving, reforming, and shaping itself through the interactions of the plates. He believed that these continents came from the existence of the supercontinent Pangaea, meaning all the Earth. And due to the continental drift, the plates are now separated into the known seven continents of the world. The continental drift can be caused by three types of plate tectonic boundaries. As discussed earlier, these were the convergent boundary, where plates collide with each other and produces volcanoes and mountains. The next one is the divergent boundary, where plates move apart and where the seafloor spreading occur. And the last one is the transform boundary, where plates slide past one another. The ones that produces earthquakes are more likely the convergent and the transform plate boundary because this is when two plates come in contact with each other and trigger vibrations from the release of energy or force. The next earthquake mechanism that we are going to learn is the elastic rebound theory, where in the racks at the edges of the tectonic plates experience stress resulting to a degree of deformation also known as a strain. As shown in the analogy of the limber stick in the diagram, the stick is subjected to stress or buildup of a strain until it ruptures at a certain amount or limit. This rupture produces energy as a strain is released from the stick. Same analogy can be used in a rubber band, but since the material is elastic, after its deformation, it will only go back to its original form. Like the three types of boundaries in the plate tectonics theory, there are also three types of directional stress in the elastic rebound theory. The first one is the compressional stress, which is quite similar to the convergent boundary where the plates collide with each other. The next one is the tensional stress, similar to the divergent boundary where the plates move away from each other. The last one is the shear stress, which is comparable to the transform boundary, where plates slide past each other. To deeply understand the process of elastic rebound theory, we prepare the roadmap for you. The first experience the rocks or the plates will feel is not love or care, but stress. It can be either compressional, tensional, or shear stress. After such amount of stress is received, rocks begin to deform or strain. However, its deformation depends on the rock's elastic behavior. If it's elastic, it goes back to its original form. If it's brittle, it breaks. And if it's ductile, the rocks will be deformed, but it will not break. The fourth step is when the rock reaches its elastic limit or the capacity of strain it can only hold. And when the stress exceeds that limit, the strain energy will be released through frictional heat or seismic waves, creating simply earthquakes. Then, the stress buildup resumes back to its starting point. To end this discussion, I think that this statement is not entirely correct. Rock's strength vary depending on its composition and location. For example, in most scale, we categorize the rock's hardness or strength 
from weak to hardest. We must acknowledge our weakness in order to gain or know what is strength. When rocks were also subjected to stress, rocks reaction vary depending on its behavior. It can be elastic, brittle, or ductile. Earthquakes are produced by brittle deformation of rocks. When a rock is strained over the plastic limit, it releases the stored energy and creates an earthquake. There goes the relationship of stress and strain in the diagram shown.